Thank you and welcome everyone for coming to the this fourth forum Kajian Pembangunan hosted by the Semino Research Institute. Today we are very grateful to have Dr. Susan Olivia from Monash University. And we send this is a group of students by this for Indonesia. Let me read a brief resume of Dr. Olivia. Dr. Olivia is an OUTS 8 postdoctoral research fellow on the Indonesian economy in the Department of Econometrics and Business Statistics at Monash University. She holds a PhD from the University of California, Davis, or famous for UC Davis, on development economics and applied spatial econometrics. Prior to joining Monash University, Dr. Olivia was a lecturer at the University of Melbourne, taught development economics, as well as at the University of Waikato, New Zealand. Her research interests include various microeconomic, microeconometric aspect of development, focuses almost exclusively on Indonesia and also China, on special econometric and geographic information system, or GIS. So today, the title of uh, Dr. Olivia's presentation is uh, is also with John Gibson from Waikato University. This is annual curve to measure CDI bias for Indonesia. We will have this seminar for two hours until 12.30 and 45 minutes for presentation. Please go down. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks uh, for Asset for having me here today. And then also like thanks a lot for you all to like, come to my uh, seminar as well. So as uh, I mentioned this today, the paper presented today is a joint work with uh, John Gibson. So the reason I put the like, Waikato there is that you know when I talked to my Indonesian friend, they thought that Waikato is somewhere close to that Waikato. <laughs> <laughs> so so Waikato is like, actually the is a region in the New Zealand, so that's why. So the paper I'm talking about today is a still is a work in progress. So I'm grateful enough for you to have come and then to present my paper to the expert in Indonesia economy. So any well uh, comments, uh, suggestions, uh, we are would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so let me like, try to like, give you some kind of like, motivation here. Is that we always know that price is kind of like a very important variable in the economics, macroeconomic content in tier. So why the price deflators matter here? So again, that, you know, when we're talking about that uh, economic performance, we try to like, comparing uh, whether that one economy is doing better than the other, we always have uh, rely on the price deflator. So the, one of these important point, uh, uh, price deflator here is that we can like, try to like, convert this uh, nominal output of income to in, uh, become a real output, and then we can like, use this uh, real measure to like tracking the growth over time. And then partly because that, you know, I'm also like kind of for mainly focus on the development economics. Once you like try to like convert this uh, real income, we can also like try to like, compare what is the uh, living status over time. Is it getting better or getting worse as well, right? So from one aspect in here, so if if you do not make this uh, proper adjustment to this uh, inflation uh, inflation in here, uh, so some of the like economies. They might be doing well, but they, if having a high inflation, you might not really get a good accurate of that what's going on in the economy as well. Apart from uh, why we need a price deflator to measure this real output, the real income in here, the other concern is that going to be used for the monetary policy here. As a result in here, uh, you know, for the bank, central bank as an authority to like, control this monetary policy, they are very concerned when they see that some kind of overstated changes in the prices they like, tend to like try to tighten the monetary policy through the interest rate or other like the market instruments like what the Bank of Indonesia the heavy in Indonesia here. And then the other concern as well is I'm not really sure whether that uh, in Indonesia context the uh, price deflator has been used to adjust the social welfare payments or like tax bracket, but I know for sure that these uh, social welfare payments has been widely used in the context of the US, Korea and New Zealand as well. So the reason is that why that the price deflator is going to be measured in these kind of social welfare payments that so for example that like, like, if there is a upward bias in the CPI or in your price deflator, 
and if your public pension is going to be indexed to this inflation ratio, so government will, you know, it eventually try to like transfer the resources from the young generation to the elderly here. Yeah. So that might be another like tax policy implication. Now let's try to take a thought experiment here. Um, I, uh, what would be the cost of the increase in the price, say price of beef or like price of chicken increased by 10%? And then now how about the increase in price by like 50%? So we are trying to estimate, give you like micro percentage here, assuming that you only like consume two goods, so let's say X1, if your price X1 is like say 3,000 rupiah, and then if you also like consume X2 is 4,000 rupiah, and if by next year, say the price of X1 is actually increased to 4,000 rupiah and then price of X2 we now say to 2,000 rupiah so how are we going to like derive from this here? so our, what is happening to the cost of living? has the cost of living increased or has the cost of living decreased, right? so one way that to try to adjust the weather that cost of living has been increased or decreased here, we tend to see we need to like come up with using this micro dealing of this price index to manage to, to give us some kind of measurement of whether that price of this, uh, cost of living has increased or decreased. So what the currently use um, price index is try to see one is like how is the CPI, the, the consumer price index. So basically with this consumer price index in here, they try to change, try to like track what is the change over the time in the cost of this you know, fixed basket of food and services here. So in comparison here, when you try to use this CPI or basically just like this last base like index in here, you try to see what is the report. So you try to like see, try to look at the ratio. What is the cost of reaching the original bundle, comparing with the uh, new price and the old price? So the key with the CPI here, you they don't allow the bundle to change at all, right? So now comparing with uh, using another like more this like cost of living index, like true cost of living index here, what they try say here with the using the this economy, you. What happened is you see the expenditure approach. What you can do in here, you still to allow increase for, uh, for some substitution, but you still holding your set of living constant here, right? So basically, with this, this is this true value index will make a lot of substitution, unlike the unlike the uh, unlike the CBI index what we previously used. So with the cost, the true cost price index in here, so I for this only here. So this is just the ratio between x. So you hold your constant. So the key thing is that this side is holding your utility constant, and then this side is holding your barter constant. So if, for example, that you are consuming five kilo of like five kilo of rice and then two kilo of the chili, no matter whether the price has increased or not you still going to start with the one and two. But with this uh, true cost of living index in here, you still allow to do some changes as long as you still maintain on the same difference. So let me like, try to like, put you graph that what I should have mean by that. Um, so graphically, that what is this going to do here? Say for example, that before the price change, you started with this budget constraint, you consume an X and Y, and then you choose uh, this your inference curve. You choose at the point such that your the rate between these budget and inference curve they are tangent to uh, tangent to each other. So this is what we are going to like, choose for the point A now. Now that uh, with the price increase here, your budget is going to like be uh, kind of seen and keep at the same time because uh, you know uh, relative price has changed here. The difference with uh, this the difference with uh, cost of living index and then the CPI is that with the cost of living index you still have to like stick with the factor A. But with the true cost of living index, 
you can try to, because that price of X has moved, uh, has gone, it could become more expensive, you just have substituted away from good X to the time for good Y. And then you see like stay on the same meters to be here. So as a result, when you like try to like, do this comparison here, if you are using a C pair here, now that point A is no longer attainable because it is way beyond your budget line. So as a result, uh, we tend to see that CPI is going to always uh, overstate the true cost of living of index. So partly because you know, with this uh, CPI, they do not allow any uh, substitution between, uh, between the goods that are going to become more expensive. So I think I'm talking about this uh, CPI is a fixed base index, so it's likely to overstate the true cost of living index. So in the U.S. during the early 80s, so the U.S. Commission that tried to have this, uh, try to like look what is the direction of this bias for each item here. So apart from this, the company substitute bias, they also have that might become possible with the outlet bias, right? So like for Indonesia, for example, in the past that we have a car for Carrefour, Hero supermarket, right? And then now we also come with this hyper market here. So you as a consumer, you kind of be like very smart, right? So you kind of try to shop around. If you find that the price in the hero or price can for like more expensive, you can like try to like switch up right here. So the reason is that sometimes, you know, like consumer like make that choice and then when the statistical agency, when they try to uh, calculate this price, they might not necessarily capture this outlet bias. So that is what I meant by outlet bias here. And then the other thing as well, with this a new product of quality change here, is that, you know, sometimes that product cycle comes quite fast and then might not be captured in time in the calculation of the CPM rate here. For example, that in the US case, when the new cell phone come here in around the like late 80s, but for the US case, they do not really capture in that basket until what like late 90s, but it could be like here. So as a result, that might be quite, uh, quite a bit uh, causing some substantial bias here. Um, and then for like some quality change as well, you know, like for in case, like computer, when it just first came out, the price has been like, quite expensive. But when you try to adjust quality and so forth, now the cost of re cost of producing to become cheaper, and then if that is not uh, properly adjusted, you must like come some of this quality bias issue here. And then the other part of this is a kind of this uh, micro adjustment formula, so it's kind of this like much more like what the statistical agency they kind of control for, because that what kind of like, whether they use a geographic mean, or uh, arithmetic mean, or some kind of physical factor that try to uh, calculate with this uh, CPI here. So with this uh, US case here, what they found is they have bought an uh, average for like 1.1% uh, bias here. So what does that mean is that according to their estimate here, if the measured inflation was at like 3%, so it was really only like more than only 2%. Right, so this one is substitute bias within here. Um, so the case for, I have to emphasize here, this is for the case for the US. So in the context of Indonesia, the direction, the proportion of these years might not be exactly the same with the US one. But for the Indonesian case, my take would be that you know, Indonesia has got be like a large economy, and quite open, quite a lot of like, structural change over the time. And then we see that a lot of development in this retail supermarket. So we tend to see that this commodity and then power level is going to be made up quite a lot of portion in this CPI bias in the case here. So now <coughs> I mean, measuring the price, measuring the cost of living change is not really an easy task here. So, um, so the Hamilton and the Costa, they come up with this new approach to try to measure this CPI bias. So what they try to do here is just like they come up with this idea using the consumer behavior to try to see, try to try you know, if there's any movement in the uh, welfare indicator, they can try to see something about this indicator here. Uh, what they are going to do here, is that the intuition behind uh, their method is that you know, after the CPI has put similar household from different time period on the same real income basis, so they should have the same level of welfare. Right? So to see that if this is this true or not, we need to choose kind of a welfare indicator. So what kind of welfare indicator will we choose? So they come up with it, they decided like, to go with the like, food budget share. Because that you know, food budget share is one kind of this empirically as the place of regularity here. So this is what we call this angle law. So basically with angle law here is that what they foresee in here, the share of the household budget equal to food cost as household income rises because of the low income elasticity of demand here. So it can let me try to give you like some um, 
suffer and feel as many here. So this is a good angle curve is a cross in the country, try to bring to the country from a low middle income to like have high income country here. So as you can see that kind of this uh, angle curve and see like a hole in here. So that like for Tanzania relatively uh, low, uh, poor compared to like New Zealand or USA. So you can see that as the country move getting a higher income here, they tend the proportion of uh, money they spend on food they tend to be lower in comparison to the developing country or low income country. Right. So let's try to like, see whether that is happened for the case of Indonesia as well. So let's like, so like, quickly like do a chart here. What I did here is like try to like divide this uh, food budget set and then by this income uh, by a different product here. So as you see we also like try we can see the pattern like now that is uh, the case as well for Indonesia, the food and the curve tend to like you know uh, slope down as your income like move uh, move up there. Okay. So um so we have had quite a study done based on this uh, angle law approach. Uh, the method has been increasing use, and then the first generation has come from the uh, US, this down by the Hamilton, they got this uh, famous paper published in the American Economy Review. What they found that the full share fell 4.5 percentage points between the 74 to 1991. So rise in the CPI and income explained only about 1.5 percentage point, and then really food price and trend other variable explained 0.5 percentage point here. And then 2.5 percentage point of food share for are explained, and then this could be attributed to the bias in the CPI here. And then as I mentioned before, so I mean the for average they bias for one percent for the yearly after. And then this application also has been uh, applicable. I mean it has been applied to like Canada. Basically, with the Canadian data, they also like found the same result here. The annual bias between like 1.3 and 2.9 of Canadian CPI over this. Then uh, another uh, another empirical evidence from our neighbor country, the Australia, that is done by Christopher Barrett and Borjowski. What they found is here is that over the 75 to the 2003, they find an average annual bias uh, of one percent. So in this income implication here, they found that the CPI overestimated change in the true cost of living by 35 34 percent throughout years of the period of study. Right. Um, so let me try to step back here. So the, the main advantage of using this angle law approach try to estimate CPA bias here, we just like trying to get the what is the overall bias over the time. We are not trying to like say which like, which part of this group is the completely substitution bias is going to contribute to this here. Uh, and then apart from this, from a this developed country, there also has been like, quite a few studies done on developing country here. So the study that I've done from Russia by my co-author and uh, still on and being here, that just based on the reason that in Russia, because that during that early 90s, the uh, Soviet Union Soviet has been like, collapsed. So they have been like kind of trying to know whether that this transition from the operator economy is going to be like, more market oriented, is that going to like, make them better or worse off, right? So there's been quite an anecdotal evidence saying that you know the transition of this Russian economy is not really helping the country at all. So what the Deep Sun, Simon and Lee found, they found that you know, this the CPI bias average for one percent per month from 94 to 2001, and then when they try to adjust adjusting this for bias of household consumption, it's going to raise the real per capita GDP by 30 percent in 2001. So as a result, you know, people that tend to see you know, the transition from Russia and here to the market may be like less diversity than the previous they thought. So that they kind of indication here. And then the other like, study uh, done uh, by Tiho and Hamon in here that is recently uh, published in the Journal of Development Economics, they try to look at this integration from Brazil. So because like, in Brazil and Latin America in the late 80s and 90s, they also like try to do like major reform, trade liberalization, moving toward this market oriented approach in here. What and it's also like some of the like, some of the like Studies uh, show that you know with this uh, sudden like reform in the economy, they are actually not doing anything good at all to the economy. I think for Brazil and then Mexico, they found that you know, during this period of time, the GDP only like grow at about like 0.1, 0.5 percent. Right? So what they did here, they try to like 
looking on this uh, probability of uh, this uh, CPI bias, they found that the CPI budget will average for like three percent per year between 88 to 2003. So in terms of this indication, you know, whether that whether the welfare of the household in this particular economy they are going to do better or worse, they found that by in this bias, the average household per capita income actually grew by 4.5 percent compared to one percent suggested by the official data. So that's probably like three percent difference in the change in the welfare of living uh, in this. Uh, so now we come to the point that uh, so this paper is going to like empirically to estimate this uh, by, uh, CPI bias using the angle curve approach in Indonesia. So you might try to say you know, why study Indonesia, and then probably like the easiest reason I can give it to you because like, I am Indonesian. So of course I you know, always find that. Anything of Indonesia is very interesting to study, but probably to convince that we have a non-Indonesian audience here, we are uh, probably like, do better than that apart from this uh, one national here. So one of these one is that because I think that Indonesia is gonna be like economy-wise, we are doing pretty well in the last few years, in the last uh, ten years or so, and that Indonesia is kind of this emerging economies, and then uh, we always have tried, uh, you know, we also been putting in part these uh, new emerging economies always like having the same economic performance compared to at least Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. But again, that Indonesia is not still uh, not really a part of the BRICS in here. I think last time I had quite a bit discussion with Bahasek whether that Indonesia should be a part of the BRICS or not. Right, so that is what we, that is kind of emphasizing important of Indonesia economy in the emerging market here. Yeah. And then the other and then the other interesting thing that's going to be like supporting that why Indonesia is going to be relevant here. So Indonesia is going to be periodically like suffered from a bout of high inflation. And then we are going to like see later on that I'm going to like show this uh, how what kind of inflation that Indonesia is facing, especially the, during the Asian financial crisis. And again, with this uh, empirical using this angle curve approach, try to estimate this CPI bias here. We do not really know for sure what is the direction it should be. Is it should be like upward bias or is it should be like downward bias here? So in the modern case of US, Canada, Russia, and Brazil, the CPI appears to exaggerate increase in the cost of living. Right? But for the Norway and the some historical US period, we also have found that this bias was negative. Right? So in the Brazil and Russia, when they have this uh, Upper bias in here, so we, we can already conclude for sure because you know, this Russian Brazil they just have a shock at one time. So we can really tell like, you know, whether that's going to be patterns going to be all other countries outside Russia and Brazil. And then for some reason this will, that's why that you might uh, from empirical point of view you might try to see you know, which is it the like for Indonesia. Is it going to be the same as we found for the Canada and Russia or we're going to like found double bias? Right? So that's the thing for the question here. So I think that is a motivate, like you know, uh, so this paper, like, and to the best of our knowledge, I think that no one actually has been done trying to present evidence on the bias in the CPI for Indonesia using this new approach of the okay. So let's try to look about this uh, Indonesian CPI data. Um, so this uh, into the CPI Indonesia is like mainly collected by the EPS. Uh, some of these are correct really. I know that we have some of these from BBS, so you might be able to like correct me on the update here. Yeah. Um, so, so this information, I mean, like, Indonesia is a really, like fast country and then archipelago, right? And then I have to like give like comment to the BBS that they have like done a great job trying to do their best you can, try to like collect this as accurate as they can, right? So with this one here, um, so because I, but BBS collects money plus observation for like 45 cities, and then this is a true. Uh, prior to the 2008, I think that after the 2008, they increased the number of cities to 66 cities, right? So the reason is because I put the 45 cities is because our data stopped at the 2008 where that increased the number of cities has been included here. Yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, money price observation, they collected about like 350 goods and services on average, and then they cover about 30 provincial capital cities and a 50 other big cities in Indonesia. And when they try to find outlet, they're using the press outlet, they're on average for like three to like four outlets per city. And then 
this kind of heterogeneous between the price of the collector. So, some, for example, like for price of the rice, I understand that they also like, calculated the, the weekly data, and then for like, some, they also like, have these uh, more like uh, by weekly or monthly data. Um, so like Indonesia, in here is the CPI is like kind of like modified the last pairs index. So they try to use combination between arithmetic mean and then the geometric, the geometric, geometric mean or in the CPI by population here. And then of course that because that when we talk about this CPI here, we need to find out what is the weighted mean to use in our basket of calculation for this price index in here. So what we are in here to do here is that budget share weight actually uh, deriving from this uh, cost of living survey or survey of BIA group. So this, you know, because that BPS is uh, analyzed because that consumer pattern might be that change over the time. So this actual weight has been revised every public so that capture that it might be a change prevalent change in the taste over the time here. So that is your and then I understand correctly uh, if, uh, from what I get so far, this is the cost of living survey that you know, mainly cover household in the urban area. So for some that reason, that's why that we actually just uh, concentrate on the urban household in Indonesia, not rural in Indonesia. And then, I mean, BBS is very good at trying to increase the number of cities, right? Uh, and before, I think before 1996, the geographic average was only like 27 provincial cities in Indonesia. Okay, now let's try to like chart uh, this uh, trend of this CPI for the urban of Indonesia between 1993 and 1998. Um, so don't worry too much about this uh, standard area here. So the standard area just represents the data that I have access to. <coughs> um, so, um, so I mean, I'm going to talk more about my data. So in this paper, that we're using data from Indonesian Family Life Survey. So this standard area just uh, tell you that you know, what is the timing when the IVLS being uh, being, uh, being uh, fielded in the field. Right? Um, so we found that you know when the first IVLS uh, being fielded here, the inflation is pretty relatively slow in Indonesia, pretty uh, before the Asian financial crisis. So when you when you look at this uh, second wave in here, the CPS increasing like probably like, most rapidly like, during this Asian financial crisis. So during this. Uh, during the crisis and then immediate after met here, we tend to see that inflation kind of be stabilized, kind of increase kind of a, as a kind of steady state here. But there's quite a big like this a big jump during this 2005, 2000 and late uh, 2006. So that is probably that because of this uh, Indonesia we reduce the fuel subsidies uh, late 2005. That might be cause a big jump during that period here. Right. So the so the striking thing from this graph is that, as we can see, that you know that the price has been quite increased quite a lot, right? So, for example, that by the time that when the IVLS three being built in here, the price has been bought like three times compared to the first wave, and then about five times as high by the time the wave four is being uh, conducted in here. So as a result, you know. With this substantial like, price increase in here, they might induce various consumer responses in their, in their, uh, with, with their budget, right? So that in this case, the CPI might not be captured very well what's going on here. But for example, so I'm going to give an example here. In the Australian case here, for the Australian case, um, covered about the same period of time, about a 4 years period. So Australian part of the uh, increase index is about uh, reach about 150, but for Indonesia, case of over period, we found that this uh, increase index for the reach to about 600. So as a result of this one here, even though in the Australia we say this models in the, in the CPI here, we found that they actually found a substantial bias in their CPI. And then probably with the Indonesia case, we such a big increase about 600 here, that might be the bias going to be potentially like bigger for the case of Indonesia. And the other thing that uh, with uh, this is here, and here is that PPS also like calcul uh, calculate the price of the aggregate and then also like this aggregate uh, se separate components like food and all over here. So what we did in this graph here, we just like try to how it's going to like inflation and 
And so it's going to like translate it into this uh, uh, form of non food uh, comparison here. So what we do here is that during the during the crisis year, we see that the food price is going to be increased at faster than non food. So during this long period here, I think our index for the food is about like more than 400, but our uh, the index for the non food is about like 200. So this can be like you know, this is the this are going to be pretty uh, and pretty so in a data done by I uh, I realized that Dr. Thomas and Strauss. So again, the big challenge in here, when this relative price is going to be increased here, uh, how you might expect the household going to like, do like some adjustment with the consumption market here. Right. So, and so what we have here is quite a possible price in Indonesia. Uh, before that we are delve into this empirical point here, is that CPI is kind of like this is a fixed weight index, right? So because that, you know, what uh, framework at all, and then I think Park Asset, and then the Park Dama as well, what they found here is that the food sales in the CPI basket, they tend to be lower than average of the food sales from various households in Indonesia. So this is a CPI basket that from, uh, from what I found here, so during 1993 to 1997, so CPI basket of food is about 39%, but between 1998 to 1993 is 30%, <coughs> and then 20, 20, uh, 43%. And then compare with this annual social data here, we found that there's going to be a substantially like larger than what is being, uh, being uh, in this CPI basket here. And then one of the results here, I think that's also like what the fragment by the part the asset farm here, is that food prices rose more than non food prices during the crisis. And as a result, you know, because of this CPI appears to like give a low weight to food, as a result, when you like try, to do of this, the cost of living increases, uh, especially during an uh, Asian financial crisis, they tend to be understate the cost of living during that time kind of period here. Yeah. So let me like, try this using this graphical approach in here, because like, when we sometimes like, when you know, no one can like, accurately, when you try to like, measure the price, they're bound to be some kind of like, degree of error here. So say for example, that over the time, this is the price that you measure, and then you also like some scenario component involved with this here. So when you try to like promote this over the time here, so this 5T is just what is a promoting percentage increase in the CPI measured price at the T time. So in terms of the empirical uh, framework here, so this method is, in terms of like data requirement, is not really much. So what they need to do with this data here, as long as we got a time series uh, of a household budget over the time, and then we got this uh, temporal CPI for food and non food all consumption, which will be able to ready to go with this uh, with this uh, method here. So, so what is this method here? Is that well, the first thing is your budget share for the food in a household I in a region J, and then a time period T. It's just a linear function of the log of the real household income and then the relative price and then under the control variable. Okay. Yeah. Right. And again, we have this uh, two cost of living of index here. It's just a geometric average of the price of the food and non food here. So why don't you just uh, try to do a bit like similar, like, you know, uh, simply like substitution into the equation here? We are going to like, find what is this. So this is the equation that I'm going to use in our message method here. And this we have also like controlling for like control variable like household demographic characteristic, and then this uh, we also including the time dummy, and then we also including the regional dummy in our equation, and then also like passing the other values to step by the equation here. So the this uh, the delta t here is the coefficient associated with the dummy variable. Is the crucial in the trying to see the, what is the uh, extent this. Uh, maximum of the CPI bias here. So what we can do in here, because this is an error in your CPI bias here, we do be many evolution in here. Once we like, try to like, get this ratio, if that is really bias close to zero in here, this our expected bias is just going to be just a ratio between coefficient estimate from this equation, this is delta, and then B associated with our difference between this reading income and adjusted for the equation. 
so that is basically that. So this is the direction of the bias that is going to be concentrated on now. So let's come to that data part here. So the data that we are using in this paper here, we are using this in the family life survey data, IFLS. Um, so probably most of you have known about this one. IFLS is the longitudinal survey data, so they track the same house over the time. Uh, by the time that we are using this one, the wave 4 already have gone So wave 1 covered about like 3,000 individuals in the 7200 household. So in terms of coverage here, it's not the whole region uh, as what like Susan was did, but they just cover about like 13 province in the wave one, but they track the same uh, same household all the time. So even though they, if they move out from the original province, the IBS is going to extract them to them. Um, so the the IBS has been known with a like, low attrition rate in the data, so about like 90 percent of the original target household returned in the wave four, and then the sample has grown from 7,000 households to about like 1,400 households by wave 4 here. And then, apart from that one, we also have this uh, detailed expenditure and consumption. They also have this uh, one week report for, for about 35 items. And then they have annual report for non food 25 items. And then, the way that, you know, uh, and then because as mentioned before, that given the concern that uh, the cost of the, the survey of the IP mainly is covering in the urban area, so that's why for all that reason for the concentrate on the urban household area to make sure we got the we got the consistent estimate here. Yeah. So let me like, try to adjust and give you descriptive statistics for the sample that we use in our paper in here. So probably this has a is a budget set for the food at home. We found that uh, this is the average at the 40%, but uh, we also like, have this sum considering fall of the 9 percentage point between the wave 1 and the wave 4. Right. So, that showing that, uh, you know, uh, this fall is going to be indicated by an angle law here. So, this fall is going to be indicated as improvement in the living standards in the, in the Indonesian household here. Right. So, and then once we do that, we can also like, try to see that whether this is going to be commensurate with the report increase in the CPI and the income in Indonesia as well. And then we also have other factors in here, so relative to the food price and then budget set for food and how, and then we also have this demographic variable, the people composition of household, and this dummy variable for the characteristics of the head and then the demand head household. So, um, so before I move on to my estimation result, is that um, there's quite a bit of the research that we use in here. Um, as I mentioned to you before, that either as they track in the same household over the time, uh, even though that some houses have been split off due to that, you know, probably like marriage or something other reason here, um, we only include this split off household if they stay in an urban area in the same property in a wave one. So the reason we are doing this in here is that because that we are also combining our IFLS data and then we also have to with the regional price degrader from collected in the years here. So to make that consistent, so that's why we are calling this a true like panel household data that live in the same province area from wave 1 to wave 4. And to, uh, there are always some of the that uh, outlier here. We exclude household extreme food stress. So for those have a food stress more than like 95 percent or like less than two percent, they might be indicate some kind of like a data uh, outlier here. So that's why for that reason we exclude that uh, this uh, observation here. Um, we also restrict this household where they had between 21 and 75 years old. So the reason that to do this is because we just want to like, make sure that we have this homogeneous household in our sample and we can try to say something. And we also like, use a different estimator for our for our study here because that the angle curve that like, developed by the Hamilton, technically that they can use it for the uh, cross section, even the like the different like, time period, we can use that one here. And then because that we have this uh, panel data, we also like try to like robustness check, we try to like, see whether there are many different if we like, treat this data as an independent cross section over the time or the panel. 
then we have to use a fixed index for that one. And then for this, we also like using a regular like OLS and the instrument variable approach to see whether that result will or not. And then the other as well, we also like try to look at whether like functional form is going to have any impact at all. So to do that, we are comparing between the linear and then the first quadratic income impact in our equation. So let's come with the result here. Um, so this is a key coefficient variable. So we pretty much have our, our outcome of interest and budget put share. And then we try to write uh, regress it through with this different variable here. So what we found in here is that the the so CPI differential expenditure is has a negative coefficient. So what does this mean? That the food budget set is going to be increasing as the household become richer. So again, that is also like confirmed with the anchor law that we already been and so this is quite well in the in the literature here. Yeah. So and then the most interesting trend to see in here, and then as I mentioned to you before. So this set coefficient related to this time variable is going to be the key here. So by default, if this angle curve holds, if this angle long hold, and then we expect you know, after adjusting for inflation, you expect that this full budget set is going to be like stay constant over the time. Right? But if there's if we see there's a drift in this uh, coefficient, it's not staying the constant, or when you try to plot, when you try to plot between and income, if we see something that's quite different here, we might be able to see that money like CPI might be contributed to this safety in the end of the year. So then, so yeah. that's the, the standard variable here is full share? Yeah. So what we see here, this might be an interesting pattern here. So we just have tried to look at uh, this incremental change. Right? So we so this is everything related to the I balance in wave one. So we found that you know um, the food budget set is significantly higher in wave two and then wave three and then it's lower in wave four. Right. So I think there's something that's got a bit interesting pattern, it's not like a consistent pattern throughout what we found in the budget of the company here. Um, so for the robustness check. We also like try to like test, you know, whether that this all time that is actually equal to zero. I think that's significant to explain what's going on in our model. We found that this actually is significant to test, so the, the angle we see that angle curve actually is actually drifting in the information content. And then we also like try to like do a test, try to implement a test whether that the dummy coefficient wave two is equal to wave three, wave three equal to wave four, or wave three equal to wave four here. We found that this all like statistically significant to test here. So what is this trying to like, say here is that you know especially let's like, say between the wave two to wave four there's a strong uh, significant impact increasing here. What is this saying that when we have this uh, negative impact here is that the household uh, in the urban Indonesia they appear to have allocated their budget in a way which make them appear utterly worse off and then better off than what the what uh, what their CPI inflated income would have told them. So again, that with this angle method here, the essence is that you're just uh, using your consumer behavior, trying to see you know whether they behave as if that the price has increased more than what they reported or something else, right? So I think again that I like this quotation that uh, that Hamilton put in the paper here. So with this method here, they say you know the consumer or shopper. They always like put their money where their mouth is, right? Not just responding to your survey. So which is like again that why that your know, decent food using a decent food budget set as one of the key variable is going to be kind of like holding that for us because what I say, you know, no matter like how how rich you are or how poor you are, food is kind of a stable commodity and with the income elasticity is quite not very elastic, not very elastic. So that is going to be all this for us in this result. And then now that it's just um, going to be a more robust check, right? So let's try to use this uh, controlling for this uh, square in the income deflated expenditure. And then we kind of find that this is uh, really significant. Right? So for this reason that we tend to see now that the functional form, the linear seems to be doing uh, performing like equally better, equally good as the quality function here. So 
And then and then apart from this I'm using OLS here, so you might want to say that um, you know yeah. some kind of this expenditure reporting they might have some kind of this potential measurement area here. So as a result of this one here to address this constant this potential error in the total expenditure. So what we do here is uh, we also like using this uh, IP estimation. So with the IP estimation here, what we use is that we use the annual income from a wage, asset and business, and then the net profit. And then we also use the dummy in the whether household are having a wage income and then whether they are uh, involved in the government sectors uh, in our as our instrument here. So that is as a test for instrument here. So this is just our test for this uh, this kind of instrument here. And then with the IP, we also like try to work with the linear and quadrilateral here. So basically that we find that our IP seems to be like, you know, uh, say that this is a very really good IP here. But the problem is that because I very much have the concern that whether they be able to have over identification, but they are more than instrumental variable to instrument for our expenditure here. We also like to do a J test here, we found that you know this all this IP you know this like we do that some of the over identification problems. So our IP are better here. Um, so with this, uh, when we try to use IP here, when we try to find this difference between linear and quadratic, so we found that this is with the quadratic here is uh, no longer significant here. So that for this reason, uh, and then we also like try to do this house test with the, the consistency of OLS versus the, the IP here. We don't really see, you know, because it's the estimate is probably the same, and then from the point of view, the OLS is much more precise in the more efficient in some of like they give us like lows and error. So for this reason, and then the rest of the paper where we try to estimate this CPI bias, we are using the OLS as our base to estimate this CPI bias. Um, and again, for this number that like, more robust than like, like I told you before, that uh, previously we just using as a uh, Use IVS as a cross section, you know, we cross section here. In this case, we try to explore the longitudinal measurement of the sample. So, what we do here is uh, we are adding the household fixed impact to the OLS regression. So, we had about like 3,800 household. And then again, what we found here, we do not find any change in the results before we report here. So, we see that this the real total expenditure inflation here is slightly lower than before. But in terms of like pattern, this between that like wave two, wave three, and wave four, we find we like consistently got we found before with OLS or IP here. So that like, trying to be like tend to be the like, worst off, worse off, and then try to be like you know the better off. So now let's try to look at this um, let's try to like look at what is this uh, what is the community bias and division for this uh, from uh, from uh, our other so let's try to like concentrate on this uh, row number two when we look at this uh, wave one to like wave three. So the initial period uh, between the wave one and wave three. Um, so basically, this like the one in the bracket it just like indicated uh, the center dates when the IVLS is being uh, fielded, and then this is here. What is the what is the year between the uh, between this wave one to the wave three? So over the time period between wave one and wave three here, we found that the CPI bias is negative. So in this sense, that the house allocated their budget as if their cost of living was increasing at a faster rate than indicated by the CPI here. Right. So holding other else concern, so our full expenditures be increasing here. And then when we look at this between ninety three and ninety seven, so the CPI did not really like keep up with the cost of the cost of living changes in here. So what we found in here is that we found the annual bias of like eighteen point nine percent. And then in fact that when we try to take this into account in here, so the real, I mean like the adjusted inflation rate should be like more than twenty five percent as opposed to like eight point forty two percent based on this uh, average inflation rate for the time here. Right. So again again um, this result is quite consistent that with the uh, with the previous literature has been but they have passed it to have done some more try to look this cost of living into the Asian financial crisis here. Because you know one of the reasons that it's kind of relatively 
no way is being put on the phone. That's why that you know during this crisis we tend to see that the cost of living has been rather understated during that period of time. And then now let's try to look at between the wave one to the wave, uh, and then after the 2000 here, we try to see that this kind of CPI bias that tend to switch from a positive to become a negative after the third wave here. So for right, so let's say for 7.5 years between the wave four and three and wave four, we found that the bias is at 0.7.9 percent. Which is if you that try to like convert it into an annual bias, it's really about like 10.61% here. Right. So again, that this this switch might be like quite substantially large, such that when we try to look at this, we should like, try to pull this together between wave 1 to wave 4 in here. So we tend to see that it's kind of bit like offset here. We see that the only bias for like 0.5% during this 40 period of time. So we then try to like annualize it, it had about like 4%, then choose about like well, almost at one third of the average increase in the inflation rate in Indonesia. So again, that you know, if you try to try to recap it in here, is that you know, the long run we tend to see that you know there's kind of big like short run we see that's a double bias, but in the long run we tend to see that's kind of big an upward bias. It's basically the effect of the two deposit, uh, the effect of the two opposite things here. So one thing is that if there's a substantial understatement of the cost of living increases during the uh, Asian financial crisis, and then after the Asian financial crisis, it tend to be you know overstatement in the change in the increase in the cost of living in the media and here. Right. So I think that let me like try to like come with this conclusion here. Um, so in the Indonesia context case here, we need really like trust the data to assess the economic performance. Like that is that is you know your country is doing very well. You need to like at least trust the data to see that how well you are doing in terms of comparison here. But again, I have to like we well, have to like you know this kind of stressing here like measuring change in the cost of living is not easy, right? So again, the probably you know. Uh, this, despite the best effort of the GPS to regularly and significantly change and collect data, even their how what in the media is here. So it's very difficult to change to measure that what's actually the real change in the cost of living is not possible. So again, with our paper in here, we try that this income policy implication, we actually try, you know, understanding the long-term performance of the you know change in the living standards here. Um, so another another approach that you might try to sign up, uh, try to like bet with the inflation targeting issue in here. Um, so monetary policy that like, trend when they try to like put the inflation targeting, they want to try to preserve the value of money, right? So if, as a result, so from the monetary point of view, if you want to try to like put this inflation targeting, you like try to like incorporate this uh, CPI bias into your targeting policy as well. But again, that uh, I know that Indonesia has been like also like uh, implementing this inflation targeting since 2001. But for the Indonesian case, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that whether this is uh, quite a good uh, good conclusion to go because that during this period of time what we found here is like we have a very high inflation, kind of be like temporary shocks that might not be applicable, that might, might not be applicable as well. And then also like, with this time of a uh, period of time like 14 years here, and then we don't have the time over the time, we just have a uh, distinct different like, four set different of time. So we might not be able to like tell you know, at which year particularly that we have this tend to have this switching between the like, from negative to the positive here, right? So again, um, as I, as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not sure whether if there's any like data available that we can like, do that in Indonesia because that Susan asked has very good detailed model consumption. That may be what foundation to do, but the problem is that the detailed consumption model has been going every three years. Right? And then the reason and, and the other one with the the cost to not also have this consumption expenditure, but again the item of this food and not food might not be quite uh, sufficient enough for that purpose for the purpose. So again for this in terms of this one there might be you know, new research, new data probably using the social message and robust attack to see what is the implication of the drive for that one. Um, yeah. 
And then the other thing as well, in terms of this policy targeting, inflation targeting here, so when the monetary policy, when they try to come to this inflation targeting, they want to preserve the value of money, right? So when they preserve the value of money, so the value of money of every single rupiah is going to be the same, right? But that is the thing, you know, like some people in Indonesia case, some people might have more rupiahs than the other. So if that is the case, that might not be something that we have to let the think about carefully in terms of that inflation targeting here. Right? So I guess that in this case, um, so for our study here, we're going to try to like, see, so what we actually like, main aim we try to see, you know, like, whether like, changes in the cost, we try to like, see what is the uh, change in the cost of living over time here. So I think what we found that, you know, we tend to see the kind of over long -term performance, we see that so that is kind of substantial, like overstated the increase of cost of living, but that reason as well, but during that uh, two period that between the crisis and here, we tend to find this kind of like substantial understatement and then that uh, over statement after the crisis in here. Uh, I think that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation and making us aware about this CPI bias. Now we have 45 minutes discussion, question and comment are welcome. So uh, uh, within the extreme food and quality, uh, uh, that is uh, what I meant is when they have some kind of outlier, somehow also they might be like, misreporting or like some this type of error in the data input here. Uh, so the cutoff is that if the if they report share of expenditure reported to food less than two percent or greater than ninety five percent, so that's something that you know it's quite a bit suspicious that when someone says that they are going to spend ninety five percent of their budget on food per se, or just at 2% on food. Um, uh, with some of that data, uh, when we like, try to calculate for that one, actually it's uh, about, probably about like 10 or 15 household out of, out of like 3,000 in each way, so it's not really substantial. Next question. I have one question, uh, why do I tell? Uh, first one is, uh, in your experience, uh, is there any other country that uh, have similar pattern to us? Because you said that CPI bias is negative in 2000 and then become positive. And so why it is 2000? Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> my second question is about the estimation. Uh, using OLS estimation, usually we do some uh, assumption testing on the model. Have you done any of them before you conclude anything? Thank you. Um, so that is a good uh, question as well. With regard to this empirical evidence of other developing countries, so that is not really many that I'm aware of. So like Brazil, Brazil, though basically that what I listed on the PowerPoint is that, that not what I come about. And then all of these countries, they don't really have a switch inside like what Indonesia experience here. And then, yeah, so that's quite a bit the switching in the sign in Indonesia experience. It's quite a bit like housing as well. So I wonder, uh, I think switching the sign can actually, so 
So between like 97 to 98, so that's one one about we have this uh, financial crisis. And then with the 2000, when the wave we here, so we don't really have any like, we do really know for sure that what's actually going on as well, so it might be come this like try to like this economy that try to like coming bouncing slowly from the crisis. So that is one explanation as well. And we we got this one for the chest. We also like did quite a few like the uh, checks for that one as well. So we control for, for this variable, other variable. You know, with angle curve we also make sure that if there's a drift in here, of course we need to control for this other characteristic, right? So in the paper. Uh, we go into detail about what kind of other control variable we use to make sure that the drift actually basically after controlling all the colors to restate the angle curve is actually uh, sufficient to like control the one here. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. <coughs> yeah, and then yeah. And then again like with this one here, um, so in this paper I just like uh, pretty much just like to report this uh, report uh, this uh, key coefficient here, but in the paper we also like on the as well. And then again, we also like, try to do robust check as well, right? and using these uh, fixed effects data as well, trying to see that everything, the result that seems to be small across. So that's why the thing I uh, Then we also like, try to do this house test, trying to see whether whoever, OLS is going to be superior than the IB. Uh, looking at this chart, yeah. this one. So uh, in 2097, uh, uh, there was a crisis, right? So it was the yeah. mm -hmm. one.
on this original price variation over the time. So what we did here, so that's why when I mentioned that when I have analyzed data, we have a panel household, but some of the households that are moving away, so we just only restrict it to them that in the province that we can, because we need to merge the user. CPI, regional, whatever we collected by the BPS, so we try that's how we must that one. So in a sense, I think we are also kind of controlling for that variation. But I think at the end, probably like, uh, quite a good point made by the part. And then I probably just try to like, stop the description to see you know, whether there are any like, variation or person increase with that we actually control for that here. Okay, uh, I have a second question. Um, could, not, not a question, but request. Can you elaborate more uh, how do you connect your uh, integration outputs and how do you get the uh, cumulative bias? So this is basically cumulative bias is from that equation here. So first let me estimate. <coughs> so first we took estimate on this one here. So we got this uh, beta here and then we got this uh, this yeah. is related to the time dummy and then this video dummy here, right? But because that what happened here is that we try to like see whether there's any driven angle curve over the time. So this coefficient guys is, is what's most interesting to us. So we're gonna try to do this in this two many coefficient here. So basically our bias here is just going to be estimated by using this equation. So just one minus exponential of this, estimated of this one from this guy, and then V dot is your from our equation. Any more questions for Colin?
the, your observation or calculations may be it is quite different from BPS and your calculations. For your information, BPS calculates CPI from cost of living survey, not from sustenance. And your data, your calculations uh, is based on the Indonesia family survey data. And your commodity, the number of commodities, uh, is quite um, small. Your commodity for food are 35. Yeah. Yeah. And non food are 35 commodities. For BPS, the total number of commodities for 45 cities, as you mentioned, are 350 commodities. So, when you calculate the CPI bias from your data, it will be a uh, result the quite different if you calculate from the BPS data. Uh, that is the first thing. And the second thing, your title is using intercourse to resolve CPI bias. So, what is your recommendation for us, DPS, to implement the angel course in the context of uh, modified last price index? As you mentioned that we calculate CPI based on the modified last price index where the quantity is fixed over time until we uh, conduct the cost of the big survey. So, what is your recommendation here? How BPS implement the angel curve to calculate CPI? This is uh, uh, my question. Thank you. Great question. Thanks a lot. Um, so, I'm aware that uh, the way that BPS used in, in for the CPI is actually calculated from the cost of the big survey. So that is just uh, with the students that try to like comparison, you know, how a bit um, kind of try to like get the difference between different kind of like, survey and you know, see, uh, especially on the books that are to right. So it looks like with the Susanna's data and then the IMLS, we tend to see the same pattern that the food item is kind of a bit like food share is much higher compared to the EPS here. But I guess with the I'm not too sure with the 3D relatively low food share in the CPI basket, is that partly because that cost of living survey mainly done in the rural area? Could that be one of the reasons as well? Because I think with Ivala and Susanna, you also like cover both that urban and rural area as well. Is it possible? I'm not too sure on top of my head. Yeah, but that's probably something you like to check. And then I see again the value point between you know the number of the commodities in the IFLS survey and the Sutomas is here, right? But that is the best that I can like, joke. I mean ideally that I want to use the Sutomas data, but the problem with the Susan I mean Sutomas data has been like known to have very good quality data. So I've been using the consumption model as well in the past my master thesis and then like, there's a tremendous amount of like, expect uh, information on the four items here. But again the problem is that with the Susanas uh, module in here, they only like, conducted every three years. And then for like some researchers kind of feel like resource constraint, getting this uh, Susanas is not, not really freely available in comparison to the IMLS in here. So I think uh, I'm not really saying that, you know, I mean, BPS, I have to like, comment that BPS has done a great job in like, you know, do their best, try to like, you know, try to like, measure this, uh, collecting the data, try to see what's the best way that the uh, changes cost of living in Indonesia as well. I mean, again, I mean, I have to admit, right, you know, I think most of us admit, right, trying to like, track price changes, uh, like, especially to try to like, measure this cost of living is not really an easy task here. So I guess that for this, we might, uh, from what I'm presenting here is that, I just uh, use it whatever like, data I can get so that, uh, as, a, as a starting point here. So I hope that you know, we can like, try to like, 
make everyone aware of the issue and then hopefully they know. And again, I said, mentioned that my result might not be that conclusive because that during this period, we have Indonesia has you know severe inflation because of this Asian financial crisis. It would be quite interesting to see you know, if I have more data, we have a fuel price subsidy being reduced in 2005, 2008, but beyond that one, I realize it's not covered that one. So I think probably like the BPS might be able to use something like the data from a Sutavas or your consumption board to try to see. You know, again, I think probably like back to a point that uh, the people made before. But how how can we tell this is switching the signs and what is it about, right? So if we have like, this consistent like probably that and more data all the time, we might try to see you now what is actually explaining between this and here. But again, because that the nature of the data I got here, I only have this like, four block of the time, so I can't really tell much again. But I guess it's still it's still you know, I mean I'm not really saying that my method is this kind of conclusive so I find this uh, provide a more forum open for discussion make people aware that you know, this comes and sees and if you like, try to like, conclude something as a you know, that might not we might be very more than careful about that one. And then apart from with the uh, recommendation for the for the BBS, there's probably quite a bit of like six million dollar question and I, I probably don't really know whether I have the answer to that one. Again, um, with that So with the with the with the angle curve method, so this technically that can partially like deal with this community substitution bias and then the outlook bias here. But with this uh, formula bias per se, that is again <laughs> it's a tough question to just probably the like, know. I mean like uh, conducting this uh, calculating this passing index is not really it's not really a cheap if they were really quite uh, costly to do as well, right? So again, I don't know whether that, you know, what we found is it's quite a bit of different methodology being used by the DPS or not. So, I mean, this is kind of like, this, it's in terms of like what is the best methodology for, for data collection, it's not really, it's really beyond the scope of our, our paper. But I think, I mean, unfortunately, I don't really have any, um, I don't have a good answer to how to like, you know, suggest to the DPS what is best, what, what should, the formula you should use to calculate this of CPI by whether they're using uh, this uh, cost of living uh, using the CPI because it's CPI probably that is like more practical than what it's being to use but the problem is that even though that this ideally this uh, expenditure approach ideally that is ideally way of measuring cost of living but the problem is that we cannot really measure your utility function right so that is probably the big I guess that means the short answer to my lengthy expression here. I mean, I don't really have any suggestion that what way to go for your methodology. Right? And
satu yang kedua sebelahnya memang yang pertama itu memang kita lihat bahwa ada di tahun 98 itu karena krisis yang 2005 itu karena kenaikan BBM jadi memang situ ada gelombang tapi ketika kita lihat perbandingan grafik di sini antara rasio food and non food makanan dan tidak makanan itu hanya yang menonjol di tahun 98 sedangkan di 2005 tidak setinggi daripada tahun 98 itu dikarenakan memang yang pada saat kita ada krisis itu bahan pokok yang semakin tinggi sehingga dia memang rasio antara makanan dan makanan seperti itu tapi ketika BDM itu naik kebetulan di situ tidak terlalu berpengaruh terhadap bahan pokok kita karena kalau tidak salah itu naiknya Oktober 2005 BDM naik itu naik bulan Oktober itu satu bulan 8 persen inflasi di Indonesia dan secara uh, satu tahun pengasal sekitar 17 persen gitu. tapi ketika itu memang bahan pokok agak sedikit tidak terlalu melonjak seperti 98 makanya akan terjadi rasio seperti ini jadi 98 memang yang krisis itu bahan pokok itu kena sekali waktu itu sehingga rasio antara kot dan non kot tinggi sekali gitu. itu yang masalah apa grafik lalu masalah metodologi yang seperti kritik daripada US Boston itu sebetulnya sudah kami peroleh informasi ini sudah cukup lama ya dari bukan ada dari Putih Kali, Pak Alpatun ya Pak Ali Rosidi juga itu sebetulnya sudah mengungkapkan tentang kritik daripada bias uh, daripada uh, Edo juga itu ya yaitu US Boston ini dari beberapa bias yang dikemukakan ada empat, di sini ada commodity institusi, outlet bias, micro aggregation formula, dan micro tapoy. Dari beberapa bias ini sebetulnya di BPS sudah uh, melakukan uh, beberapa langkah begitu untuk mengurangi bias ini. Pertama, outlet bias itu sebetulnya kita tidak ada. Karena ketika kita mencacat, kita harus pilih. Kita harus menggunakan outlet yang sama setiap bulannya. Jadi harga pada bulan ini di outlet ini tidak kita bandingkan dengan harga di bulan kemarin di outlet yang lain. Sehingga outlet bias kita tidak ada sebetulnya karena pada outlet yang sama. Yang kedua yang micro aggregation formula. Di situ ada aritmetik dan geometrik mean. Malah ada tiga kalau nggak salah itu ya. Cari apa lah ya bisa lupa ada tiga. Itu tiga formula kita gunakan di BPS itu di Indonesia. Jadi aritmetik kita gunakan juga, geometrik kita gunakan juga pada saat kita menggunakan micro aggregation. Memang pada saat kita menggunakan uh, modified base bias, keseluruhan agregat itu tidak mungkin. Karena dia juga umum kan, tapi secara kecil dia sudah kita gunakan. Jadi kita sudah menggunakan geometrik, kita juga sudah menggunakan aritmetik yang kedua. Yang quality chain, perubahan kualitas itu pun sudah kita tangani. Karena kita tidak membandingkan itu produk yang kualitas berbeda sehingga pada saat kita mencacah bulan ini harga bulan ini untuk suatu barang dengan kualitas A tidak mungkin kita bandingkan dengan kualitas B bulan kemarin sehingga yang uh, bias terhadap yang perubahan kualitas itu tidak terjadi di sini itu tidak bisa kita tangani ada dua betul yang uh, bias di uh, apa, dalam penghitungan inflasi di Indonesia yaitu komoditi institusi dan produk itu karena apa? Seperti yang Ibu Susan tadi terangkan bahwa kita menggunakan best areas yang kuantumnya itu tetap itu berubah ketika ada supaya baru gitu. Nah di sini memang ada kelemahan kita pada saat komoditi institusi. Kenapa? Contohnya ketika cabai naik, harga cabai naik melonjak. Pada saat harga cabai melonjak itu padahal konsumsi kita kan terkurang sebetulnya. Ya kan kita mengurangi konsumsi kita cabai kita kan? Sebetulnya ada pengurangan, ada kuantiti begitu untuk komunitas cabai begitu. Nah itu yang jadi takut dari stres kan, sebetulnya. Nah setelah kita coba melakukan beberapa supaya-supaya kecil ya, yang merupakan untuk jasmen begitu, tapi itu baru hanya beberapa jenis barang. Tapi kita memang uh, mengakui bahwa di situ ada komuniti institusi, artinya ada bias, ada bias institusi di situ. Yang kedua, bias daripada new product itu benar. Kelemahan dari pedagang stais, ya memang produk pasti lebih besar itu karena apa? Kita pakai fix ya, komoditi basket gitu kan, kita bisa berubah dari pada itu. Itu memang yang agak-agak sedikit uh, uh, bias jadi komoditi institusi sama produk. Nah untuk menangani ini sebetulnya kita sedang mengkaji beberapa metode 
yaitu seperti mengambil fase apakah nanti juga SPS kita bisa lakukan adjustment dengan survei-survei kecil ya dengan survei-survei kecil seperti itu tapi itu masih uh, fase itu sedang kita dalam kajian gitu sehingga seperti yang yang ingin saya bahas sebetulnya bias kita ini setiap tahunnya itu sebenarnya nggak pasti bisa nggak kita hitung gitu misalnya untuk tahun 2011 inflasi di Indonesia 6,96 persen satu tahun itu bias nggak kalau misalnya dikatakan bias itu kan pasti ada parameter ada luka kan itu namanya bias gitu nah kalau misalnya parameter itu adalah inflasi yang bisa real kita kan itu real dari lapangan gitu pendugaan itu berapa ya kan kalau namanya bias kan pendugaan nama sektor kan gitu karena yang realnya itu Indonesia nah, di BPS gitu dengan dan lalu dugaan estimate itu berapa lalu metode apa yang menggunakan estimate itu supaya kita katakan 6,9 bias nah itu terima kasih oke okay, ya. ya. Just yes, uh, talking about the fashion and the class wars. Just uh, just remind me uh, when I was a student last time. <laughs> Because uh, I just had a very uh, very 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 So what is the you know uh, the issue with with, with uh, your calculation? Just thinking about this. Atau atau kalau teman BPS nih, BPS kan uh, ingat saya itu ada bias upward dan bias downward lah. Saya lupa yang mana yang 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 apa namanya yang pas pas atau yang pas ya. Satu itu ke atas biasnya, satu ke bawah. Ingat saya, ingat saya seperti kalau yang indek itu kan yang ideal kan bisa bisa ya. bisa itu selalu ada di tengah ya, kan? Tengah. Nah, okay. nah karena apa? Bisa itu kan ada ya dari tanda pasir dan respirator sehingga pasti ada di tengah namanya ya. rata-rata begitu kan? Ya. Nah itu memang di respirator itu kalau tidak salah ada di atas ya. pasir itu ada di bawah awan. Jadi pasir bawah bisa. Terima kasih banyak Pak. Ini benar-benar informatif banget Karena makanya kan ini senang Mau mengambil kesempatan untuk presentasi Krisis Susan di Indonesia Untuk mendapat komen Ekspor dari Bapak Rio sendiri gitu kan Soalnya Susan juga Di luar negeri juga adalah susah mendapat Informasi yang update Tentang di mana yang terpenuhi Jadi benar-benar kesempatan yang bagus ini Pak Terus
setelah disesuaikan dengan bias ini harusnya kenaikan si, e, harga 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 di Indonesia itu jadinya lebih dari 25 persen dari 18 tambah 8,42 kalau yang tadi Pak Asep bilang yang 10 sama 9 jadi kayaknya tuh jadi e, ya memang ini jadi e, tidak setinggi yang jadi harusnya no uh, inflasinya inflasi ya. Jadi kan tadi uh, uh, Sorry, I get the warning from the technician that we should speak English and use this mic uh, for the recording. <laughs> okay. of course, yeah. So I think that's going to emphasize that what Pak uh, Aset mentioned before, right? So uh, we actually not doing that as we have thought during the good time. Right, so in this case, like, you know, it looks like you know, the, the houses kind of charge, you know, the way that they spend the food, that they can expect food that increase at a faster rate than what that the cost of living has been at that time. So if we, if we use this number, Kedua, 
bagaimana daripada uh, interpretasi daripada indeksnya itu sendiri. Kalau indeks daripada respeyes kita bisa menginterpretasikan tentang kenaikan dan penurunan harga karena bantunya kan tetap. Sehingga indeks itu bisa menggambarkan oh kalau naik itu uh, indeksnya naik itu pasti ada kenaikan harga secara agregat. Kalau indeksnya itu turun itu akan ada penurunan harga secara agregat. Kita bisa kumpulkan secara investasi secara sederhana seperti itu. Nah, sedangkan untuk investasi dua-duanya bergerak, harga bergerak, bantu bergerak, sehingga yang kita transaksikan ada suatu nilai. Nah, apabila kalau misalnya pasal kita gunakan itu investasinya yang kita nah, kita pikirkan itu investasinya adalah kan biaya, biaya yang jadi biaya hidupnya kan. Nah, sedangkan kita akan kehilangan informasi seperti Apakah suatu komoditas itu naik atau tidak? Karena bisa saja dia itu harganya naik, tapi bantunya turun. Ketika kita bandingkan, jangan-jangan indeksnya itu menjadi turun, padahal harganya naik. Sehingga informasi yang kita peroleh indeksnya naik kok, apa indeksnya turun, harganya pada naik begitu. Karena ada bantun, bantun yang berjalannya begitu. Nah ini mungkin bisa nggak informasikan ke kita tentang indeks pasir. Kami sedang belajar itu. Terima kasih. Aku as a business, business
is that because that one of the purpose of the central bank as the important targeting, one is that you want to like, control the value of money. Right. So once that you know what is the direction of this CPI bias, you can also like, try to like, set what is important targeting by this positive number of these bias. And then that's what probably one of the reasons you know, when central bank try to like, uh, set the inflation target, they never really set the zero inflation target because you know that bias, like but they do want to say that you know, bias is going to be there, of course, that's why not. And this, uh, from this bias, you can like, try to like, see what is it. Uh, what, you know, we kind of try to see what kind of bubble joint that your, your inflation target should be set at. Right? So again, with my method in here, we can, as, a, as I stressed before, that we have this span of like 14 period of time, but we don't really have an annual data over the time. And then because of with this kind of this uh, big shock happening to Indonesia during the Asian financial crisis, we can try to see that it's kind of a flip, flip sign between years. So I'm not really sure that which, within these 14 years, right, over time we see and then probably this, uh, this long term period for the time we see that it's kind of an upward bias and then, we, and then from this between I got this wave 2 and wave 3 I can say something you know, that because you know, probably like kind of, this, uh, sub, uh, kind of this offset between the upward bias during the good time and then the understatement of the increased cost of injury bad time here but um, and again you know, unless I have a long period of data, I might be able to tell you that which particular year is going to be. We can like, try to like, see what's to be careful about the, the, the Congress implication as well. So again, that if uh, for the implication, if Central Bank of Indonesia can one try to do that, probably like you know, can try to use robust using a different data set, and then probably like you know, try to look at using the Susanas, whether they can do it or not. And then probably uh, in, uh, using different methodology in calculating the uh, price index. I think like I really don't know whether that might be using a possibility of using a Pascal uh, index or like something else. And then probably with this uh, new integration of uh, cost of living survey with the supermarkets, mm -hmm. you might be able to adjust this uh, cost of uh, the basket probably like every year or every two years instead of waiting for like five years. Because uh, Indonesia is kind of the country that everything has struggled to change very fast. Within five years, probably might miss something. In in that period as well. And yeah. yeah. So in this case, yeah, even though that the intention for these people to just try to see what is a long run, you know, like change in the welfare, but that also has been some potential as well to use for inflation. I mean, I know that in a particular case, this actually has been done by the uh, by the Reserve Bank. So that's what the people, again, put it again, using other data and then put it uh, improving methodology that could be. And more like you know, give it a more like, concise policy implication here. Yeah. So just just very short. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you take a look of the geographic geography of this country. Uh, uh, some of the increase is driven by the you know, the, the supplies of goods because sometimes that and I mean the supplies are the also is very difficult to get the price of food there in some in some places. Mm -hmm. Higher than, 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 than other places. So maybe this can, can be included in the factors which is difficult to bias. I don't know. But in my regression control, I also control for. I mean the location. Oh, I control for the regional dummy. Oh. But if you. That will help you a lot. That will help you a lot, that one, yeah. yeah I think we are reached to the end of this seminar and we give a big applause for Ibu Susan. Thank you very much uh, for everyone for coming to this uh, forum. We still have two more forums that will be hosted by Snow um, next uh, Wednesday and the following Wednesday. And today we also serve lunch for everyone after this